Hey guys, what is going on? I'm with Chris today and today we are going to try to install the Jeep Gladiator Rubicon shocks, the ones that are Fox, onto this Jeep Grand Cherokee and see if it works. Okay, so these are the shocks that I'm going to put in on my Jeep. I got these off of a Gladiator and for only $250. The guy had about 500 miles on them before he upgraded to a, I believe a two inch lift kit. So we're going to try to install these on the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, let's see how much they measure. So this, these right here, the longer ones, are the rear. And from eyelet to eyelet, that's 25 and 3 quarters. For the front, it's about 23 and a half. So we're going to see if these will fit. And I think they might be a little bit too short for the 4 and a half inch lift. We're going to go ahead and try it out and see how it works. So first steps first, we're going to take off the rear shock and then lift it up to see how much drip we have and how much length of a shock we need for the rear. Also, on the front of the shocks, they are a little bit different. Um, they're both eyelet and eyelet on both sides. I don't know if that's the correct term, but this side will fit with this bracket here, which I'll have linked down below. This just goes over the top of that, and then you're able to connect it into the other bracket that's on the Jeep stock. On the bushing, it has this piece here that extends out, which we will have to cut with the grinder to allow these to fit, because on the stock Jeeps, you have a bolt going through the top. These don't. So we have to cut it up and make these fit. We have the shock off on the bottom mount and we're gonna go ahead and lift it from the frame. That way we can see how much droop we have in the rear and how much length we need on the shock. So we have it lifted enough for the wheel to be off the ground. It's hard to tell on camera, but it is off the ground, barely. So now we're gonna measure from eyelet up here to the bottom down here and see what we get. So from eyelet to eyelet, we are 27 inches. Let's check back to the Gladiator shots. We're about 25 and 3 quarters, so we are too short on the rear. Um, I will still install the rear because the ones that I have right now are bottoming out. They're actually way too short, so I'm going to install these for now. But I will get longer ones in the future. But let's go ahead and install these. So to change out the shocks, it's really easy. It's a 15 on both the bottom and the top. Yours might be rusted out. Mine were. I actually broke the other side, but uh, once you get them out with the breaker bar, this should be easy. So once you get them out, I would recommend lubing up the screw to get it back in, but they might be hard to get out. All right, so we did have to grind down the end right here just to be able to fit in the shock mount. The shock mount on the WJ is a little bit smaller, so you just have to grind down a little bit, not too much, but now it should just go right in. All right, so we got the Rubicon shock on the rear. We did have to grind down the bottom to make it fit, but not that much, only a little bit. And the top, we actually put on, put in a washer. So now it's in and it's good to go. Let's go, baby. <laughs> now I'm actually gonna have travel in the rear. Before the old shocks right here, it was actually overextended, so it was pretty much bottoming out, uh, if that makes sense, like the rod was all the way up top. So now it's actually gonna ride good. All right, so we have to measure the front as well. Uh, you're definitely gonna need a big jack or some pieces of wood to stack up. But the same thing, you wanna undo the shock, and I undid the sway bar as well because off-road I'll be running without sway bars. And what you wanna do, measure at the bottom of the base where the shock goes, right there at the bottom, and then you don't wanna measure at the top. Uh, so this one's about 26 inches. So we're gonna want a shock about 27 inches so you're not over uh, extending it. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove this one all the way and measure the other shocks. The shock itself, let's see how long it is from eyelet to eyelet. It's about 23 and three quarters. So it's a little bit too short for us, but we are adding these pieces to make it fit on the Jeep. So this will actually add, this will actually add an inch and three quarters more. That'll make it about 26 inches. And we also got this extension on the bottom. So that'll make it about 27 and a half inches, which will be perfect for our needs. So what we have to do, the bottom will fit on there uh, perfect. So we don't have to do anything there. But on the top, these on the Jeep come, as you can tell, extended out. So this is not gonna fit there. We're gonna have to cut it. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so the bottom mount is in there uh, loose. I haven't tightened it yet, but it uses a, so I had bolts with nuts at the bottom and those just fit right in perfect. I just need to tighten those up. On the top end, we do have this right here, which just goes through without a bushing. It'll be tightened up like that up there. 
And the way that I'm gonna put it is like this. That way when the shot goes down, it won't bind up. It'll just be solid. So we do have to cut these, like I said, to fit this on there, which will be pretty easy with the grinder. And yep, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so now that we cut it, the mount actually fits on there good. So we're gonna go ahead and install it on the Jeep and show you guys how to do it. Okay, so the bottom is in now. And we're gonna stick that through. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like at the bottom. It's pretty tight fit there, but it does fit. Now, the next step is to line up the top and we should be good to go. As you can tell, these shocks with the extensions, this is more than enough length for a uh, four inch lift with long arms. So that is good to know. Okay, so for the top, I have the top loose enough so I can twist it, uh, get a socket in there and a wrench. Um, I don't know if I can, but we're gonna try. And then we're gonna twist it into place and tighten it on top. On the bottom, I did tighten the bracket first before I put the shock in. All right guys, so there it is. As you can tell, we have the Rubicon Fox 2.0s in there. Um, I probably should have flipped it around so it doesn't show this end, but that doesn't really matter. And the rear is done as well. So we are good to go, finally. So if you do plan on buying these shocks, um, I do recommend for the front, like a minimum of four inches because let's see, I have about that much travel, like four inches of travel up, if that makes sense. But I have a lot of travel going down, which is good for the long arms. So I would recommend like a four, four and a half inch lift for the front. Now on the rear, these are gonna limit your travel if you have a four to four and a half inch lift. I would recommend the rear as is for like a three inch lift. But I think what I'm gonna be doing is extending this bracket down with a spacer, make a spacer or something like that. That way I get more down travel and make it better for the lift that I have. But I mean, honestly, for a four inch, this is a perfect setup for the price, you know? If you're looking to be on a budget and you want Fox shocks, this is it. Honestly, they look pretty badass. Like the red with the silver. I don't know. What do you guys think? These are a great alternative since you can pick them up for like $200, $300 for the set for front and rear. And then the adapters, it's about 50 bucks for both of them. I have them linked down below. But I mean, for Fox 2.0s for $250, that's like just the rear, you know? It's, it's really worth it. And I've had the rears on for a little bit. So the ride quality I know from the rear is pretty good. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about putting the Fox 2.0 on the Jeep Grand Cherokee. In the comments down below, leave a like and make sure to share with a friend. Peace.